The cry of a newborn baby. Sounds of joy, hope and new beginnings. Unfortunately for many women in this community, it was also the sound of death. I had my first baby at home. The baby died. The labor for my second baby started in church late at night and I had him there. The only hospital was far away. Before they could get me out, the baby came. He died too. Durumi, a sleepy village perched on the hills of the Buari Area Council in Abuja, Nigeria. An agrarian community, age-long traditions and beliefs have guided their lives for as long as they have lived. Some of them, some of the people that live in this community, they believe sometimes if they deliver at home and they are not able to deliver, they believe that it's one witchcraft or the other that doesn't allow them to deliver. We had to create a lot of awareness because for so many years, People had, you know, they had um, done things in the traditional way, a lot of myths, a lot of beliefs, you know, and um, it was difficult to change their mindset. A woman has, I mean, will have uh, an obstructed labor, and sometimes it is termed to be witchcraft. You know, she has been unfaithful to her husband, that's the reason why. Without a clinic in the village, the women had to walk up to 15 kilometers or more through windy and treacherous roads to access medical care in the next town. If they went into labor on the way, there wasn't much of a choice but to have the baby there. By the time I was in labor, I could not find hospital here longer or a clinic. So it was in the night. I was in labor in the night. My baby was about to come out. And I'll tell the Okada to you, drop me down. Now I go back to, I find a place like this, then I pull up my, I remove my wrapper, then I spread it down. It's for there. I get back to my baby, I born there. We had to walk to the next village, even in labor. It was worse during the rains. The roads are slippery and inaccessible to cars. Imagine a woman in labor walking through difficult, muddy roads. Our women suffered during labor. There was no hospital here. No good roads. The men would build a wooden contraption like a ladder and strap her across it, walking many kilometers to the next town till they could get a car. If they didn't get there on time, sometimes the patient died. Adetayo Irinle has always had a passion for helping women and children. When she got to know about the villages in these areas, she knew she had to do something. She set up Tabitha Kumi Foundation to give women and children a better life. Well, when um, Tabitha Kumi was set up, or when it was about to be set up, but one didn't even realize the, had, I had an idea of um, the challenges women had with um, delivery because of um, people that had come in contact with and stories they had told, you know, and a few experiences. But I didn't realize how bad it was that there were total, I mean, communities, thousands of women who didn't even have access to any kind of health facility women who didn't even know what it was to go to a hospital, you know, women who were used to having their children at home or being attended to by, um, you know, untrained traditional birth attendants. Through Tabitha Kumi's efforts and the giving of spirited individuals, an old classroom block at the local village school was renovated into a health center. We had to do that gradually, sensitizing them, creating awareness, helping them to understand that, you know, this is a better way, you know, to do it, and you'll achieve the result. And so we asked the area council to, put, to staff the facility, which they have done. But we didn't, we didn't leave that there. 
because we know that if the staff, whoever the staff are, if they are not in the community, the purpose cannot be achieved. And so we went beyond that and provided accommodation for the midwife within the community, which we have also done in other communities, make sure that the midwife stays in the community. And then our other strategy is to make sure that there's someone who is an indigenous who speaks the language, who also works in the facility. We have been able to put up structure, just like I've said in Kau, and we'll be able to furnish it and provide staffs, adequate staffs, to take care of the health services over there. Drumi, one of the community. But that Drumi on was in partnership with Tabita Kumi, the, one of the NGOs that we partner on the construction and providing of health services to our people. Um, and I'll be able to tell you that such places have been equipped and staffed, and they are functioning, and they are providing health services to our people. The effect of the health centers started small, but rippled through the village and to other surrounding communities. I had my first baby at home, the second one at home, up to the fourth. It was my fifth baby I had in the clinic. By the time I was pregnant for my third baby, things had changed. There was a clinic. I had the baby there. The nurse took good care of us, and my baby is healthy. This clinic has really helped some women that does not cut that cannot have easy access to other uh, health facility outside the community to make use of this place for their for immunizing their children, which has really reduced infant mortality rates in the community. Before their first birthdays, four out of ten children would not I mean could not uh, survive. But now, first of all, because there's access to health, the women are monitored, we've not lost any child in the center. And we have been able to have a trained and experienced midwives to mount all our primary health centers. Where there is no medical doctor, there's a qualified midwife, a trained, experienced midwife. As such, I will be able to tell you that with the equipment we have put in place, with the type of staff we have in such primary health centers, grossly, it has reduced the maternal debt, it has reduced the infant debt to, down to the minimum level. Education plays a pivotal role in ensuring that women are informed and aware. A woman who can read and write can better understand her health needs. Tabitha Kumi Foundation went the extra mile to light up the minds of women and young people by building schools in the communities. Demand and request. Those your handwriting books, where are they? That's your handwriting With the help of uh, Tabitha Kumi, they encourage me to stay. They are always asking of me, looking for me, taking care of me. So it really made me to wish to stay. We have been able to tell them to do one or two things, such as going to the primary health center because it is meant for them. Not only for them to be attended to, but we want them to take the ownership of such primary health center. If the primary health center is in Drumi, you don't expect to see me there, or you don't expect to see Tabitha Kumi attended to there. The hospital or the primary health center is built for the purpose of such a community. And we have been able to sanitize them, we have been able to enlighten them, knowing fully that they should take ownership, the facilities that are meant for them, they should be able to go there to access such facilities. There's a change in our village, a great change. We have a new life. Our children don't fall ill as before. The women deliver safely and every case is treated well. Thank you. We are always encouraged to come to the clinic. Our children are treated. We are also treated at no cost. We can deliver safely now with no fears. Thank you so much. I am very happy. I have benefited from this clinic. We are well taken care of. And because they are here, I am called a happy mother today.
you are put to death. There is no doubt that the success of the health centers in these communities are evident through the throngs of women and children that are stronger and healthier since its inception. But it's not yet bliss all the way. Lack of skilled attendance is a major, you know, problem. It's um, once there are skilled attendants to attend to women in hard to reach communities, in rural communities, maternal uh, mortality and child mortality will reduce. We need a lab where we can be running some of these, our basic tests and a lab personnel. Because without it, this place is more or less a dispensary, especially in the aspect of when they come with their minor ailment. It would be wonderful if every woman can have access to a health facility without having to pay transportation. If every woman can be able to walk to a health facility nearby, I say without having to pay any form of transportation because sometimes the little amount of money, you know, that it will cost to transport a woman to the health facility may just be the problem that can make her lose her life. Just that amount of money. You know, if you can save um, 200, 300 children in one community and it is scaled up to that number of communities, you know, we'll be saving thousands of children.